Previously on Dragon Ball Z. Let's make some dice. I don't have a vacuum chamber for the silicone, so it's possible the issue is with the mold itself. Now, when I finish mixing, there are a lot of bubbles. And this was really fun, so I think I'm going to do it again, and again, and again. Hi, I'm Karen Terry, and I'm back with another dice video. And while I am no longer technically a dice virgin, I am still very inexperienced and under-equipped. So today what we're going to do is try out a bunch of bubble-reducing tips that I have seen across the YouTubes. We're trying all of these because I don't have a pressure pot. So if there are bubbles in my mold when I put the cap on, then there's going to be bubbles in the finished dice. One thing to note, I am still in this video casting completely clear resin. That is because I want to see as clearly as possible the bubble reduction inside the dice. Also, I'm bringing in a piece of knowledge that I have from learning other crafts. That is, that a lot of this stuff is muscle memory. Knowing a tip in your head and then actually executing it on the craft are two different things. So that means we're going to do several attempts today. So let's get started with the tips. Tip number one, give your resin a hot bath. Resin likes it nice and steamy, so get your resin warm by using hot water. I'm putting my resin bottles in some hot water that I got from running the tap for a bit until it was steaming hot. I have heard not to use boiled water here because that would be too hot. And I've also heard that using a heating pad, for example, the kind you put in like a reptile cage, can work similarly to putting it in the warm water. The point is to get the resin flowing. If it gets nice and warm, it'll be more liquidy, and the more water-like and the less syrup-like means that less bubbles will get trapped in the resin. I let the resin sit in the water bath for a few minutes, and then I poured the resin into my silicone measuring cups. This time I used two cups and then poured those two cups into a third. I was trying to not end up with uncured sticky resin that I had to clean up after, but the reality was just that now I had three cups to clean instead of one, so I didn't do this for the other attempts here. Tip number two, stir with something thin and non-porous. I don't have anything both thin and non-porous, but I do have something thinner than the silicone stick I was using before. So we're going to try stirring with this thin wooden stick. The idea is that the smaller your stirring utensil, the less bubbles you'll introduce. You'll also introduce less bubbles by stirring slowly and never lifting your stirring utensil. Moving your utensil up and down will introduce air bubbles. So I did all of this, trying to reduce the amount of bubbles introduced when stirring. Tip number three, let the resin breathe. Resin needs air just like we all do to survive, and Art and & Glow has a 40 minute pot life. So after you stir, let the resin sit and breathe for a bit. This will allow the bubbles you did introduce to rise to the top. And since we warmed the resin in tip one, the resin is more water-like, so they'll do this even easier. I let my resin breathe for about five minutes. Tip number four, toast the resin. Resin is a tropical creature that loves to be warm, extremely so to the point that you should take fire directly to your resin. But only a little bit. Resin can still burn, so you have to be careful here, just like toasting a marshmallow. If you toast too much, you just end up with a sticky mess. You as anyone who's ever had a marshmallow drop on the bottom of a barbecue, you know it just keeps going and going. But the point is, after the resin breathes, you'll have some foam of bubbles at the top that you can use a grill later like this to pop. Next, I pour my resin into my molds. Tip number five, pour the resin in a thin, high stream. This will make it more likely that micro bubbles in the resin will pop on their way down the resin waterfall. Some still do make it down the stream though, somehow I try to tell them, back, back over the but they just don't listen and just log flume down anyway. Just when you don't 
just like everything else so far, the more water-like the resin, the better this will work. Then, once the resin is in the molds, I start looking for bubbles again, and I do see some. Tip number six, poke the resin. Yes, unlike your cat, resin loves to be poked. So I take a toothpick and start popping bubbles by poking them and bringing them out to the edge. At this point, I still wasn't happy with the level of bubbles in the resin, so I let it rest some more, and then did some more poke, 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 and some more torch, torch, torch. And then I decided, enough, I'm bored, and I put the cap on. Then, it's time to wait for the resin to cure. 24 hours later. Alright, let's see how they came out! This is so much better than my last video. Now there's still a decent number of bubbles, but I start to think that maybe I don't need to buy a pressure pot right away. Maybe if I can get good at some of these techniques and I'm using actual colors, you won't really be able to see the bubbles I have in my dice. Now obviously a pressure pot does help reduce the workload because these tips are a lot of stuff that you need to do to reduce bubbles, uh, but I'm poor and can't justify the cost of something like that for a hobby where I'm this inexperienced. So instead, let's try these techniques again. Now this attempt I didn't film because I really wanted to concentrate on executing the techniques instead of worrying about camera angles and things like that. I did, however, do a few things differently. Because I wasn't trying to film, I was able to take the resin bottles to the kitchen sink to warm them up. Uh, filming kitchens is hard and y'all don't want to see my kitchen anyway, but basically what I was able to do is continue to keep the warm water running so that it stayed nice and hot, and I was able to turn the resin bottles over to make sure that they were actually getting more liquidy and wait until they got the amount of liquidy that I wanted them to get. Second different thing, I went back to using just one silicone measuring cup because, well, I didn't want to clean up three different cups. It was dumb doing that in the first place. Third different thing, I went back to using my silicone stirring stick. I didn't really see any particular benefit to using the thinner stick. I, I think what was really the key is having warm resin, not the type of stick you're using to stir with. I did, however, film the resin while it was resting, so enjoy some footage of bubbles rising and popping. I let it rise for about 10 minutes this time. I am trying to trust that I really do have a 40 minute pot life here. Now, I have heard that if you heat up the resin like I'm doing, then that reduces your pot life, but I don't know by how much. I haven't timed it. I haven't figured that out, so I'm trying to just assume that I have a full 40 minutes. Okay, let's see how bubbleless attempt number two came out. Way better. Okay, so these techniques are right. Well, except the smaller stirrer. I, I don't really think that does anything for me anyway. Then I had to see if I could repeat the success. For this attempt, I did everything the same as attempt number two, except when I was letting the bubbles rise out of the resin while it was resting, I also put a heating pad underneath to keep it warm so that even more bubbles rose during that process. So let's see how that attempt turned out. This turned out pretty much like the last one. So now I have two sets with very few bubbles compared to my first two sets. And here's each set side by side. And I definitely think when you look at these, they get better and better. And so that you can really see the progression and how much these techniques helped, here's all four D6 that I've made so far side by side. And you can see them clearly getting better as you go down the row. Also, now that I have that, I can see if there are actually issues in the mold. If I have the same mistakes on both sets of these dice, then I know that the issue is with the mold itself. And I did find some, specifically. This corner here on my D4s, this corner of my D8s, this corner of my D12s, and three spots on my D20s. Here on the 15 face, here on the 18 and 4 faces, and here on the 6 face. The D6, D10, and percentile die are flawless queens and have nothing wrong with their actual molds. This does mean at some point I need to make a new mold. I have my eye on some sort of clear 12 that I want to get and try out, and I think I might have to get some more because I'm pretty sure I used over half of my silicone making this dummy thick mold. After the inspection, I decide to take the best die from each of these final two sets to create my best set. And consistently, 
every time the last one was the best. This is the major point I was trying to make earlier when it comes to learning new crafts. If you're like me and like to watch a bunch of these videos on YouTube and then you try it out and yours just don't end up as flawless as the YouTuber effortlessly made it seem, this point is for you. The way they do this is muscle memory. They've put in a ton of practice, often years, to get it to look so easy for them. This will not happen to you, even if you follow the tutorial exactly as they show and exactly as they say. There is no substitute for muscle memory. You simply have to practice and do the craft again and again and again to build that up. You can see that process happening for me when you look at the D6s side by side, and if you keep practicing, you'll see this type of progress too. Now, maybe you won't see it quite as fast as this, but you will see progress eventually if you keep practicing that muscle memory. Okay, this has been my PSA about muscle memory. Back to talking about the actual dice. Three days later. Now that my resin has had plenty of time to degas, it's time to polish and paint up this set. But before I did that, I decided to try and fix those voids. To do that, I got some UV resin, put the tiniest bit inside of the void, and then used a UV light to make it cure in just a few minutes. Now, I happen to have this UV light already from when I did gel nails, but you can get kits where it comes with the UV resin and the UV light. Anyway, after I put in the dab and cured it, I took an X-Acto knife and shaved off any excess on there, and that a spot where the excess was will have to be polished up as well. So on to polishing. I only filmed a little bit of the polishing because like I explained last time, this is very, very boring. Um, I did do this a little differently this time. However, I didn't want to lose the numbers like I did on that first set and plus these around edge dice. So maybe my technique was good for flat because that's what most people are doing, uh, but these are not flat. So instead of putting face down and doing circles, I focused on just those edges where I felt issues and tried to round them. This way, I'm not sending down directly onto the numbers themselves most of the time. Now, to keep myself entertained while I was polishing, I watched Tick Tick Boom, which was already kind of sad the first time I saw it, but I got a little weepy seeing Sondheim since he just recently um, passed away. But if you haven't seen it, it's not just sad. It also has a lot of Broadway cameos and it's really goofy, like goofy in a good way. Like there's this song called Sunday and it's all about brunch, <laughs> sort of. You have to see it. Um, but this, there's this line stuck in my head that's in the blue silver chromium diner. And hey, that gives me an idea. These dice are all clear glass, like Cinderella's glass slippers, which have kind of a blue tint to them. I saw someone else do this technique with clear dice and I'd like to try it. So I'm painting white on all of the numbers first so that this color is on the bottom and is what shows through when you look through the dice. Then I'm painting pale blue on top so that they still have the blue hue without just turning super blue the way that the purple and clear ones turned super purple. And this is what that final set looks like. I'm pretty proud of these and I'm getting better, I feel. And now that I know a lot more about bubble reduction, I don't feel the need to keep things strictly clear where I can see 100% of what's going on inside the die. So I'll be moving on from here for my next sets. So like, comment, subscribe, all of that YouTuber stuff if you'd like to continue seeing dice content on this channel. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Oh my god, it's full on double rainbow all the way across the sky. God, it's so bright. Oh my god, it's so bright and vivid. Mm -mm. That's the shot. That's the shot.